Looking to get into digital radio? Well, today on Ham Radio Basics, we're going through how to assemble a digital hotspot. Whether your flavor is DMR, Yaesu Fusion, D Star, or whatever, today this hotspot is going to help you get underway. So let's take a look today on K5ATA Ham Radio. Okay, ready to get started. So here's what we need. You've got your hotspot kit, which is going to be your case and everything. I've got the header pins, which you'll see why in a moment. Um, your Pi Zero, make sure you've got your Pi Zero. You will need a pair of needle nose pliers, um, a Phillips screwdriver with a relatively small bit on it. I don't know what size that is. You'll need your soldering iron, um, unless you bought a kit that already has header pins installed and some solder. So you don't need a whole bunch to get this thing going and on the air, so let's get started. Y'all do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Um, it does help us out, and let's get going. Okay, so how to put together an MMDVM or Pi Zero hotspot. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got. First, we have The Pi Zero itself, um, you'll notice this one does not have the header pins. That would be my fault when I click to order it. I ordered the one that didn't have the header pins in there. Not a huge deal for something like three bucks or something in two weeks. I ordered, I don't know, eight or ten rows of these things on Amazon. So I have them. And you can see these are just longer on one side, short on the other. This is the side that you solder to. And then we've got the hotspot kit that you can buy. Let's see what we got in here. And a little, little ribbon there. Okay. Inside the hotspot kit we have, let me go ahead and open this. Okay, we have the hat, and the hat just fits down on top of the Pi Zero, like so. And that's what those pins are for. And I said, let's see, we need two, four, six, eight. I need ten on the side, so I'm going to end up using twenty of those pins. Um, I'll just solder them all across there, and no big deal. Um, it's got the antenna jack here. And it's got the display here, so you can you'll see some basic information when data is coming through, like um, what service it is, like DMR or whatever, and you'll see a call sign and whatnot come through there. Okay, uh, let's see. You got the little stubby antenna, little standoffs for um, to separate the hat from the Pi Zero and the screws. I don't see any nuts in there. Maybe those are self-threaded. I guess we'll see. Okay. So, first things first. Soldering iron is hot. Ah, okay, look. They are self-threaded in the bottom there. So, we're good. And this thing, if yours comes together, you can really just kind of it's got these little metal tabs in there. There. Okay. So that's a, a part. Now when you put this on, obviously it's only going to fit a certain way. And it's going to fit like so. And what you'll have is you've got your antenna jack here. Your display here, you want to make sure you take off that coating before you stick it in there. And then under here you actually have a row of LEDs that indicates that it's powered up and whatnot. In fact, so I don't forget, take that off now. Okay, so with that hot, what we're going to do is we need to solder these 
and then uh, you can see these the long ends are going to go and push into here so you need to make sure that the long ends are up and the sh oh, there goes the repeater identifying so all you're going to do is you're just going to slide that through and we're going to solder these on right there at the bottom now remember i only really need 10 on each side on each end there so what we'll do is we'll just set that down um, a trick if you can't don't have a surface or for some reason it doesn't want to sit straight and whatnot for you blue painters tape works well you can just kind of take a little piece of just kind of take a little piece of painters tape there and kind of wrap it on there. It doesn't have to be strong or anything. It's just got to be enough to kind of help hold it still for you so you don't have to fight holding it the whole time. Um, so soldering these. We're just soldering these to the soldering pads. If you are unfamiliar with how to solder, look above. I'll post a link to the Ham Radio Basics video on how to solder. But this is a relatively quick process. And what we're going to do is we just take the iron. We're going to wet it a little bit first. See, it's good and hot. And you just kind of touch it. And I'll go ahead and tell you, you want to make sure that you get good solder joints on these. You know, I need to clean this tip. Because the first time I ever did one of these, I fought with that thing for a pretty good while trying to get it to go, and it wouldn't work. And it turned out I had one cold solder joint, and it would not read everything right. So it doesn't take long. You just, I will caution you, if you're using the tape, though, be careful not to burn that tape onto there. It's also a good time to point out, and I actually left it at school. I took it to school to use with some of the students there. Those helping hands with the magnifying glass come in extremely handy here. So, it can be a little bit tedious because it's such tight quarters. Ooh, I need a little water. Okay, so a little bit tedious. You can buy these already assembled. I think they're like 120 bucks or something. But well, we should get better at soldering anyway. And it's kind of like a good little project to. work your way through. Clean your tip often when you're working with fine little stuff like that because you don't want globs of solder coming off of here and shorting out between two pins and whatnot. Just make sure you've got a sponge there and little brass shavings to oops see I've got a big old glob there. That last one, I can tell that one's not a good solder joint. It kind of blobbed off of there. I forgot to clean it. So you want to double check, like I said, make sure 
solder has flowed well and is adhering the pins or the posts to each pad. Because those pads, oops, yeah, I might have just shorted that one. Nope, we're good. Clean your tip, clean your tip. Get a good look at these others. That one right there looks like it could use a touch. I can tell you though, just take your time. Make sure you do it correctly the first time because I took it back apart and after troubleshooting that last one for a while. I finally said, you know what, maybe it's a cold solder joint. The same thing I tell my kids all the time at school. It's like, have you checked all your solder joints? Make sure they're good. I think we're good. All right, so just gently peel your tape off if you used it. If you didn't, well, don't peel your tape off. Okay, and I'm not going to bother soldering those others in because, well, they don't go anywhere anyway. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so you've got those in there. Now... The way this is going to connect in is these pins. Make sure you line them up. Let me turn this off because I'm done with you. Okay, line them up carefully. Gently just kind of squeeze them together. And that's it. Okay, now sometimes depending on the kit you get, sorry about that, that's the repeaters identifying. Sometimes, depending on the kit you get, you end up with long posts that the folks left hanging here. Just cut those posts off, you don't need them. So if your kit ends up having between the hat and your header pins, rather than try to cut those header pins off or whatever, just cut these posts off because they're, they're just soldered in here. They don't do anything past that point anyway. All those posts are is to the other side of your OLED display to help you display stuff. Okay, so after that, we are going to open our bag of tricks. All right, you will need a fine little screwdriver. Looks like this is going to be a Phillips head. And... I'll go ahead and tell you, I've said it before, grab one of these, doesn't have to be that brand, but I rather like this setup here. Um, grab you one of these little precision screwdriver sets that the heads to, or the tips interchange for you. They've got Torx bits, um, some really fine Allen bits, and some fine Phillips heads, and slotted. I just find it easier than digging through and trying to come up with them. Alright, so these little dudes here, what they're designed to do is kind of keep the stress from... This is where pliers are handy. They're designed to keep the stress from twisting down and... Put any excessive pressure, pressure rather, on those pins. So you just kind of peel it up, line that hole up, just like so. Take your screw, and you're going to end up dropping it through. Now I'm going to back up for a second because here's the thing: I have two longs and two shorts. Okay, so depending on the screwdriver you have, you may or you may not be able to get to this bottom hole here. So mine gets a little bit too big, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take that screw out. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and mount this in here now. Okay, now I'm going to tell you this goes a certain direction. 
All right, so make sure you check your orientation for what you're going to do here. So boom, boom. So your shorts go on the same side as the pin. And you may find it easier to drop one or both of those in earlier, depending on the size of your fingers. OK, so that kind of ovaly end is the end for the ovaly. That's not even an oval. I don't know what I'm talking about. But that's the end uh, for the SD card to go into, or at least that's the way I orient them. I guess technically you could fit it the other way too, but good luck with that. All right, so screw these down. OK, and they should come flush there, stay flush there. And then we take these other ones, because now I'm secured in here. OK, and I'm going to go ahead and slide the hat down onto the Pi Zero. Make sure you're lined up and gently push it evenly down. Okay, take your handy dandy pliers and at this point you definitely need handy dandy pliers to get this in here. If not, you are cooler than I am. Take one, drop that in, and you may have to kind of adjust that till it goes in, and just give it a turn or two. You don't want to tighten it up too much because you're going to have to get this other one in too. Give it a turn or two to hold it in place. Take your other one, bada bing, bada boom, do the Fandango. That one just slips right in. that. Go on down. Let's see if I can already tell it's not straight. So there we go. Seat it in there and then tighten these two down. Okay. And you want them tight, but you don't need them. You know, you don't have to really bear down on them. You're just going to tear stuff up. Okay, again, make sure you've taken this display protector off of there. And at this point, we're just going to slide this down over the top. And this is just like a, there are no screws or anything to hold this on. This just kind of has these little latches and you just kind of slide it down. Just a little squeezing and whatnot. Okay, and that's there. Take a handy dandy antenna, which was loose on the base. Alright, so that's it for how to put this together. It is not complicated, it is powered. They give you a little bitty short cable here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug it in. And make sure we power up. You can see the green light comes on. You're not going to get anything on the display because I don't have an SD card in there programmed yet. This is actually one I'm building for a friend of mine. And that's that. So we're off to a good start. So I'm going to unplug that. Um, the next step is going to be programming and copying the image onto an SD card, programming PyStar, which isn't that complicated, so that you can use your hotspot. So any questions or anything, any comments, please comment below. Hit like, hit subscribe. I do appreciate it. It does help out the channel a good bit. Y'all take care. We hope to see you on the air. 7-3.